Hi, I'm Nick Faulkner, and I'll be taking you through the Digital Systems module, but so you don't have to look at my face all the time, I'm going to minimise and then disappear for most of the rest of this recording. In this particular module, we're going to talk about hardware and software. Now, if you go and look for images of computer hardware and software, you'll find a lot. Here is what I found looking for computer hardware. But what does this all mean? There's a lot of it about it can be confusing, and the same thing happens when you start looking for software. There's so many different pieces of software. So what are we going to do in this particular module? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to review the stuff that you've already done on data and representation, because that understanding and terminology is very important for talking about what we're talking about in this module and also for later modules. We're also going to look at the wide variety of technology that's around today, the stuff you could find on your desktop, the stuff that's in your house, the stuff that's in schools, and how this has changed over time. But we're also going to look at comparing computers with us. And we're going to explore the idea of how a computer is similar to things that we find on a human. And how the computer can also be seen as being equivalent to some of the functions of our brain. And we're going to give a lot of examples as part of this discussion. Examples of how you can actually put things into a computer and get them out again. Finally, we're going to develop some terminology. A lot of these you will already know, so our apologies if we do cover something that you already know, but we're trying to make this as general as possible. By the end of this module, we hope you have a good understanding of digital systems, you feel familiar with them, and you have a sound basis for building on this in later modules. What are we waiting for? Let's go. So let's have a quick review. Data itself is raw information. It's a collection of facts, and we're going to have to process it to give it meaning. Once we've processed it, we get information but this is now dependent on the context in which we processed it. But this is great because it means we can now make the right sorts of decisions for the context that we have. You can review all of this in more detail by going back to module two. Why are we talking about it now? Because digital systems are all about taking the data that we have and providing it as useful information so that our digital systems help us to do the right thing with all of the information that we have so we can make great decisions and we can do much, much, much better things with the resources that we have. So let's start by looking at some hardware. Let's start by looking at the desktop that we're using to actually produce all of this. Now, this has got a fair bit on it. Your desktop may not have as much, but it's a good place to start. So let's have a look at the desktop. The first thing you'll notice is that some things have wires and some things don't. We're in the middle of a transitional period at the moment where a lot of things can communicate to the computer without having to use a wire. We'll talk about that in more detail later on. Starting from the left, the first thing you'll see is a laptop. What makes it a laptop? Well, it's an integrated unit. And by integrated, we mean the keyboard, the computer itself, and the monitor are all put together in one convenient form that you can carry around. Like most laptops, it has its own battery, and it's designed to be taken around and used in a mobile fashion. The next thing we see on the desktop is what we would call a desktop computer. Now, a desktop computer has got a stand, usually, of some sort. It has a screen. It's quite large. It's not designed to move around. In this particular case, the screen and the computer are one unit. And this is becoming a more common form factor because that makes it easier to put it on a desk. It also generates less heat. As we'll see, there are other ways that we can construct a desktop unit and quite often they're constructed with a separate monitor, the screen itself, and the computer. One of the other names we have for a desktop is a PC, and PC just stands for personal computer. You'll hear both of these terms interchangeably. All of the things that sit around the computer, like the keyboard, the mouse, a trackpad, a microphone, are collectively referred to as peripherals, and these plug into the computer in some way, or wirelessly connect to the computer and they allow you to extend the functionality of the computer and put things in and take things out. Finally, we're going to talk about other things you might find on the desktop, which are used with computers and are in fact now computers themselves. The first of these is the tablet, and tablets are small portable devices with touch screens. They are fully functional computers, but they lack a lot of the peripherals that you'd normally see on a computer. And the smallest model of these is often a phone where the phone itself has tablet functionality, which means it works like a tablet. The all-in-one unit, as it's often called, is quite common in labs. 
but here's a desktop setup where the PC and the monitor are in fact separate. In this case, the person has two monitors, but as you can see, the monitors mean you actually end up with more cables on the desktop. So what have we been covering? Well, regardless of whether systems are older or modern, they've all got roughly the same kind of components, and if you go around and you look into almost any environment, you're going to find a fairly rich source of technology to have a look at, whether you have a lab or whether you've got a desktop, and it's just going to look pretty much the same. But when it comes to cables themselves, it's really important to know what's going to happen before you unplug the cable. The worst case is that somebody gets a zap from the power cable. So if you're actually looking at a setup, in particular if you're going to let students have a go at something, please make sure everything's really carefully labelled and that you always communicate to students when they can and can't unplug things. Hardware is only half the story because whenever we deal with a digital system, we're dealing with the hardware itself, but it comes through the software and everything we do is actually going to be controlled by software that's been written by people to work with the hardware to achieve our outcomes. This is a very high level overview just to cover some concepts that the students might come up with. There's lots of information about how software works on the web. Let's start with the depiction of what we would call a software stack, where we build everything on top of the computer hardware. Now, the computer hardware includes the processor, screen, mouse, and keyboard, and any other peripherals that we've got connected to it, including printers and things like that. The hardware itself won't do much. So what we need on top of that is a thing called an operating system. The operating system is going to allow us to manage the resources in the hardware. It'll do things that allow us to hit a key and have that key turned into a set of instructions that do something later on. It's important. There are lots of different operating systems and most of the time, once it's installed on your computer, you can then just use it. The operating system allows us to work with the computer hardware. Sometimes, however, when we want to have the same sort of features available to the applications that run on top, and we'll talk about that more in a second, we provide what are called shared libraries. And you may see this referred to where you have to install a certain thing in order to make a family of software work. We won't talk about it much more, but it's important to know that it's there because the operating system provides function to work with the hardware, and sometimes as well as that, you've got to install other bits and pieces in order to make applications work that sit on top of the operating system. Finally, we get to the layer that we generally call software. Games, word processing, even the recording software I'm using to put all this together. This is what we generally see. It's what humans normally interact with. We hit keys, we look at the screen, the whole thing appears to work, and we are getting access to the hardware in a way that we want. So that's the whole story. A digital system is actually put together out of a combination of software and hardware. And the software generally handles all the interaction with the human being, and it allows you to use the hardware without having to go in and solder wires or hit individual switches on the inside. Next, we're going to talk about different ways of interacting with systems and how we can use and make systems.